Hello everyone, Lytro Storm here, and today we're back with What If Kenny and Lily Swapped Places. This is part two, and in the first part we covered the first three episodes of season two, as well as Lily's build up to season two, so make sure you check that out using the link in the description or comments section. In this video we'll be covering the rest of season two, and showing you just how many changes that Lily makes over Kenny in this scenario. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Following the terrible events at Howe's, everyone remaining escapes and almost all of them regroup at Parker's Run, with the exception of Luke and Sarah. Lily will be heartbroken that Sarita is now dead, as I think she would have put her down after she stopped being responsive instead of keeping her around to the end like Kenny did. Lily has now lost all three people that brought her back from her past state of misery, all in a few short days after Clementine and her group showed up. When Mike and Bonnie sent Clem to talk to her, Lily would either be broken or furious at Clem if she cut off Sarita's arm. If she also took the beating from Carver, she'd add that she did this even after she took the fall for her. She decides that she needs to be alone at this moment, so Jane and Clem leave to find Luke and Sarah. They do so with it going the same as it did canonically. They either leave Sarah to die, or Clem manages to save her. She's hurt just like she was in episode 3 of season 1, but like then, she'll continue to push forward. Clementine talks to her a bit, and Lily either appreciates the help or brushes it off, saying that what happened doesn't matter. They need to keep going. Just after that, Rebecca's water breaks, but no one really knows what to do about that since Kenny's not here. They decide to split up and search for a safe place for her to go. Mike and Bonnie check the museum while Jane goes off to check the building by the river. Lily and Luke opt to stay behind with Rebecca and potentially Sarah, and Clementine does her thing with Lily, Mike, and Bonnie, helping out where she can. However, when Clem and Jane encounter Arvo, another cool split will occur from the cannon. Before Jane can grab Arvo and take his gun, Lily would show up and disarm him instead. Clem asks why she's here and not with Rebecca, and Lily replies that Luke's got her. And she saw this guy approaching. Here, Lily and Jane both try to get Arvo to explain what's up, and Clem searches his bag to find all the meds. Upon hearing Arvo's story about his sick sister, Lily falters a bit, reminded of her own father's condition. Jane insists they take the meds, but Lily's more determinate. I'd say, if you've been generally favorable to Lily, she'd find her humanity and advocate not to rob Arvo. However, if you've been playing generally negatively toward Lily, I think she'll decide that they're desperate enough to take the medical supplies for Rebecca, her eye slash Mike's eye, and Luke's prior injury. Here's a list of things that will negatively or positively affect Lily's mental state right now. Clementine makes the final decision unless she's done no negatives or positives. In those cases, I think Lily would make the final decision. Obviously, if you did no negatives, she'd choose not to rob Arvo, and if you did no positives, she'd rob him, despite your choice. I'm really wanting to flesh out Lily here in a similar way to how Kenny was fleshed out in Season 1, where your actions with him literally defined his character throughout the game. But anyway, Lily heads off either with or without the bag shortly after Arvo leaves. Jane speaks to Clementine briefly about her feelings on Lily, as she can either think she's based for wanting to rob Arvo, or think she's being too hopeful for not. If Clem went for the opposite of Lily's choice and she caved, then Jane adds that it seems like Lily has a soft spot for Clementine. Clem then leaves, but Luke never shows up since he was the only one left with Rebecca and possibly Sarah. This means the walkers that pull up to Parker's run would have been spotted a while ago, as Lily and Luke are both there, securing the place. So upon Mike and Bonnie's return with the water, everyone would immediately leave to go get to the observation deck. There's also no Jane and Luke situation, so everyone is much more calm. Rebecca goes into labor, with everyone trying their best to keep her calm through it. If Clem or Lily took Arvo's meds, Lily would give pills to Rebecca if Clem chooses not to. The walker herd would be approaching due to Rebecca's screams, but the group would have a decent distance on them. So I do think that with a much better situation given, Alvin Jr. would be born even without Kenny's expertise. The group then has to drop the deck to deal with the walkers when they arrive, but I think with Lily there and everyone being less scrambled since they had some time to prepare, Sarah just standing there and falling to her death would be avoided. And since she avoids her death, that means she gets to stay alive. Jane would then leave in the night, but Luke wouldn't really be too attached to her since they never spent that time together. Instead, Lily would approach Clem, giving her thoughts on Jane, which will vary depending on your Lily's position. She can either be kind of sad she left, as she was starting to respect her, or say that they'll have to move on without her. The group then starts a discussion on when they leave due to Rebecca's condition. Lily wants to leave the next day, but can either be understanding of everyone wanting to rest, or be adamant about them going. Either way, Clem makes the final choice. The group eventually heads out, where they're approached by Arvo's group, 
and a standoff begins. Rebecca dies, turning into a walker and trying to buy AJ, causing either Clem or Lily to shoot her before she can. And with that, sparks the gunfight. This goes pretty much the exact same way it did canonically, so our group makes it out with only Luke's leg injury. Jane saves him at the end, returning to the group, and Lily is furious at Arvo for doing this to them, though I don't see her calling him a commie and beating him down like Kenny did. Those seem a little harsh from Kenny. I don't think Lily would do that. They choose to move on to the house Arvo tells them about, and Clementine changes either Lily or Mike's bandage, which allows her to check up on them. It doesn't hold the same significance as the original scene, though, but it's still neat. They eventually hunker down at the power plant, though Clem would need to convince Lily to join them at the fire. She'll basically just reflect over everything that's happened and try to make sense of it all. But if you fail to get her back, I don't think she'll knock out Arvo like Kenny does. You'll also get Sarah back into the fold by talking about how her father would want her to keep going, that the group still cares for her, or that she needs to be strong. Saying nothing will just lead to her sitting alone with no one being able to convince her to join them, as Clementine is pretty much her only through line. Also, if Mike got beat up by Carver, he wouldn't offer any drink to Arvo in the first place, since he'd be less compassionate due to his trauma. The group then continues their trek the next day and finds the water by the house frozen over, forcing them to cross slowly. This rule is then broken when Arvo starts running across, which I think would still happen due to him seeing it as his best opportunity to escape. Here, Lily and Mike will either run after Arvo or stay calm and walk slowly, depending on who received the beatdown from Carver, so obviously one would be running after Arvo and one would be walking slowly. The ice beneath Luke starts to crack, which gives us the same predicament we had in the original story. Sarah would be freaking out if you saved her, so depending on who didn't run after Arvo between Lily and Mike, they'll try to calm down Sarah and get her to follow them. Meanwhile, Clem and Bonnie try to sort the situation out with Luke, but it doesn't go well. Luke drowns like in the original game, and Clem can choose to break the ice and save Bonnie, or not risk it and leave her trapped. Either way, everyone else makes it inside, and we see Lily once again getting furious at Arvo. But, again, not nearly to the same extent Kenny did in canon. Clementine would be able to have some dialogue with Lily during this encounter. She could tell her not to go over the edge like she did before, to focus on the supplies slash fire, or justify Lily's anger to the rest of the group. After some rest, Jane tries to talk to Clem about how unfortunate it is that Luke died as she was beginning to like him. Mike would come in asking Clementine if she can go see if Lily might need any help fixing up the truck outside. She might want the company, and he just did about everything he could to help. He wants to try and rest. Clementine goes out and talks to Lily, reflecting on what has transpired in the last few days, basically just making sure Lily is good mentally and isn't going to do anything wild because of Arvo or the back-to-back -back deaths. They also talk about the group and how they feel about all of them. Lily would want to go to Wellington like Kenny did originally too. Interactions with Bonnie will vary, but they did in the game as well anyway. If you saved Sarah, she would be inside, and Clementine can talk to her, but she's very shut down once again now that Luke is gone. That was the last person from her main group, and now he's dead too. Obviously, Clementine just has the standard dialogue choices here though, so nothing much. Jane and Clem have a moment with AJ before hearing Lily finally fix the truck. For some of you, this might be hard to believe, as once again, she just doesn't have the expertise Kenny does, but I think given her time with the Air Force, she'd be able to figure out how to get it running. It's even more likely since Mike has helped her a bit too. So it wouldn't be too far-fetched to say that she has some of that experience, where she could be able to figure it out. The group then discusses what the plan is, and Lily wants to find Wellington, Jane wants to go back to Howe's, and Mike suggests Texas. He also thinks they should bring Arvo, unless he got beaten down by Carver, in which case he wouldn't mention him at all. However, since they can't agree on it, all of it is put on hold to sleep for the night but Lily insists they should leave at first light due to their low amount of baby food. A key change is set off here though, as I don't think Mike and Arvo would try to leave due to how much more stable Lily is in comparison to Kenny. Mike decides it's better to just try and work things out with the group and stick together. The morning arrives and all ideas are put onto the table. Mike will want Arvo to stare regardless of his prior issues due to him reflecting on it. Arvo does know the area pretty well and he hasn't really done too much bad in all honesty. Sure, you could blame him for Luke's death and some minor injuries, but that's about it. Lily won't agree at first, but depending on what you say, coupled with your prior choices, she might. If you wanted to leave Arvo, you could mention the shortage of food, how Arvo got Luke killed, or that he might not want to be around the same people that killed his sister. However, if you wanted to keep Arvo, you'd mention how he might know more good spots nearby, that they need all the people they can get, or that he's still a person and they shouldn't leave him behind, which will be coupled by a reference to Lee's decision on whether or not to leave Lily behind in episode 3 of season 1. Depending on Clem's choice of words here, the group will either leave Arvo or bring him with them. 
If they leave him, they give him enough supplies to make it on his own out there. Clem and Jane also tell him about the town that they saw and give rough directions. Mike chooses to stay behind with Arvo if he hasn't been beaten by Carver, as he doesn't want to leave this guy out here by himself, especially with his leg. And if Sarah is dead and Mike stays with Arvo, Bonnie will choose to stay as well. She just doesn't see much hope with the group anymore, especially now that Luke's gone and Mike is the last person she really knows. So this is kind of like the equivalent of season one's who do you bring to save Clementine moment. Because now your group consists of Clem, Lily, Jane, and AJ, with Mike, Bonnie, Sarah, and Arvo, all being determinate on if they're with you. Though the more people you have, the more tight of a squeeze it is into the truck. It's ultimately decided on going to Wellington, but if things don't look promising there, house is the next best bet. Then maybe they can try Texas like Mike suggests. After some driving, the truck comes to a stop in a blizzard and the group is forced to travel on foot. Here, due to some arguing and walkers approaching, they all get separated. Lily takes AJ here and Clementine is left alone or with Sarah if she's still alive. Clem treads onward, hearing Mike, Bonnie, and Arvo in the distance if they came with you. She tries heading toward them, but walkers block the path. Clementine also hears Bonnie screaming if she was there, as she tries to escape the walkers. Clem and potentially Sarah head forward until they make it to the truck stop, where they find Jane and Lily with AJ. Luckily, Jane had grabbed the supplies they'd carried out of the truck, so they'd be all good. Clementine can mention how she heard whoever was in the distance and how they need help, but Lily and Jane aren't so convinced they made it. The two then disagree on whether to go to Wellington or Howes once more, as Jane really didn't like the idea of Wellington and just kind of went along with it because everybody else folded, and this random event screwing things up on the way to Wellington kind of heats things up. So the argument leads to a brief scuffle before Lily hears AJ crying and decides to stop the fighting. She asks Clementine what she wants and she can decide here. They either keep going for Wellington or turn back and go to Howe's. Clem can ask for Sarah's opinion, but she doesn't really have much to offer since she doesn't like Howes and doesn't know anything about Wellington. And so, after searching and waiting in the area for the others if they came with you, the girls set off with AJ once more. If they go to Wellington, Edith sadly is forced to turn them away due to how many people there are, until Lily begs to let the kids stay. Edith reluctantly agrees, but only if it's just Clementine and AJ. If Sarah is there, she'd be forced to say no, as it'd be too many. Though, the option to let Sarah go by herself into Wellington would be available, since she's been through so much and really needs to be in a good place. It'd be a touching goodbye for Sarah, as she ventures into a hopefully peaceful life. Alternatively, if Sarah isn't with you, Clem and AJ can go in, leaving Jane and Lily alone. If you chose to go to Howe's, the same predicament with the family would be presented. Clementine can choose to let them in or not, which will either upset or not matter too much to Lily, depending on her position. And that is season two of What If Lily and Kenny Swapped Places. As you can see, Lily is just not as much of a hothead as Kenny after her time away from the group and has really learned to cope with things even after Sarita has died. However, if Carver does beat her down and you make a series of negative choices toward Lily, then obviously she's going to be a bit more hardened and turn into a sort of Kenny-like figure. But I hope you guys have enjoyed parts 1 and 2 of the series and look forward to more. Season 3 and 4 have a lot in store for us, so I'm excited to give you guys those parts as well. And in the comments, let me know if you prefer Lily or Kenny in Season 2, based on this version. Before I go, let's give a quick shout out to all of our channel members. Wax and Parrot Fish, Kyler Fiend, Fonklocks, Hazy Brush, Hayden Banks, Paul Keen, Ellie Deplug2, Scintillating Susie, and Roderick Hare. Thank you so much for being a channel member and supporting the channel. If you want to have access to awesome perks such as having your name read out at the end of the video, consider becoming a member as well to support the channel. But as always, tell me if you like this part, tell me what you think will happen next, comment your request for future videos, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, have a great day.